Hello, guys. Good evening, everyone. Gabs here, watching the glass digital beast stream. Welcome. Uh, you didn't have a chance to see me with a bit of light on my face from, from the outside world. Well, um, it's happening now. London had a beautiful, shiny day, so I thought, why not keeping the window open for now? Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, I hope you had, we hope you had a fantastic um, um, weekend full of joy, good news, good beer, good food, whatever you want. Um, the most beautiful thing about what's happening right now is that probably we do have a timeline to come back to our normal life or a sort of it or a version of it, whatever you want to call it. So uh, there is a lot of speculations about what is happening in the outside world. There are a few words which are really, really popular at the moment. One is, uh, you know, I don't want to say that, you know, already if you watch telly. And uh, welcome. This is our um, exclusive digital broadcasting show, which means we are going live with some of the best people um, in the industry, in the beer, hospitality, and brewing industry. Um, the reason for that and the reason because they are um, some of the best people is because they are, you know, creating communities around what they're doing. They're supporting communities. They are um, just making the difference within their community themselves. And whatever you add in that value into an ecosystem, um, you just, like, deserve to be heard and you deserve to make your voice as loud as possible. And I've been lucky enough to spend an entire month uh, chatting with the women in the industry, some of them. Some of them are just incredible. I found out so much about what's happening in this industry, listening to their stories and listening, you know, um, all of the inside and outside. And I, I, I just like can't stop to, you know, um, find out more about the industry. I can't stop that much then. We also, uh, next to the Digital Beast stream, uh, organize Turning the Tide, which is a show that is coming on YouTube. Please, I'm not telling you much about it. You go on YouTube, you go on social media, you find everything. And from the 1st of April, we launch it. That's what I'm saying. Um, there are some people within the industry which you tend to find often, um, you know, in social media or just like when the people telling about uh, who doing things, who deserve to, you know, uh, have a specific place. And and Julie is definitely one of them. Um, I, 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 I love so much to travel, uh, even if I'm sitting just in my room, to different, uh, you know, beer cultures and beer cities around the UK and don't know much about, you know, uh, the north, um, the north uh, west yet. So I'm gonna find out a bit more because uh, Julie is um, co-founder of the Neptune Brewing, and she's also um, the, the, the 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 soul behind Ladies That Beer. And if we don't know much about that, we're gonna ask her straight away. So please welcome Julie. Hello. Hello. <laughs> that was a little introduction. Thank you very much. My pleasure. <laughs> I, I, I always love to, you know, uh, uh, give in the, the right uh, insight about what's happening and, and whoever's joined us. So welcome, Julie. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. And how was your day so far? How has it been? It's been a bit manic, to be honest. Um, Mondays is a busy day for us for, for sales. We tend to do a, a lot of our orders and things as well as, uh, as all the bits and bobs. So, and because there's only a, a few of us in the, the brewery, then we're all scurrying around trying to get everything done. But other than that, yes, it was a, a nice day. <laughs> nice. And, and t tell me about tell me about uh, how how far you are from the brewery itself. Like, do you have to travel a bit, or is it not far from where you live? No, the brewery is literally in a car, it's five minutes. And okay. if Les and I want to walk, then it's about 25 minutes walk from where we live. So we're very lucky that we don't have far to travel. Nice. And and, and also, like, for whoever doesn't know much about Liverpool um, in terms of the geography of the city as well, um, would you say then, and then it, it's, uh, you know, the brewery, Neptune Brewing, is, is, is pretty close to the to the station to the city center and tell me more about that please right neptune brewery is in a suburb called mcgull so yeah. we are 20 minutes if you if you in the city center and you jump the train line then we're 20 minutes out on the train and then in a taxi it's five minutes away once you get off that train station so we're not that far if you like so we're not in the city centre, but we're, we're on the outskirts of Liverpool City. 
Well, you know, again, for, for the London distances, uh, sometimes you chatting about going north to south for five, six hours by walk. So, uh, mm. again, London is you have no excuse to go and visit Neptune when you are down to down uh, up to Liverpool. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Liverpool, I say, is a fantastic city anyway. So we get people who come to visit us. Uh, they'll come to the tap room and then they'll go into the city to visit all, you know, afterwards to go all different pubs and bars, which is great. So, yeah, we can work quite well like that, come to Neptune and then head off back into the city centre and support the bars and pubs that we have there. Lovely. You know, I, I love to um, surf into the web and looking for information about the guests and the breweries or the bars that are coming here as a guests. And when I was looking for Neptune, I found a real decent amount of information and most of them are just telling about what you're doing guys what happened how did you start some other ones are uh, you know uh, celebrating um, um your beers some of their words that you won so i'm not probably the best person to tell the audience about between me and you to tell our audience about neptune itself may i ask you to to tell us a bit more about yeah, the brewery itself? yeah uh, Neptune began in 2015. Um, we celebrate our sixth birthday this coming April. Um, it started originally by Les. He wanted to change. He had his own business, which was an aquatic shop, which he ran with his father. His dad decided he wanted to retire. So Les carried on with the, the business for a couple of years, and then he decided he wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, most people, when they have that bit of a you know crisis, thinking right, I need to change your career. At the age of forty-five, he decided he wanted to to start a, a brewery. So uh, it just sort of come about like that. And he said we we were home brewing, so he said he wanted to get on and and you know sort of become a professional brewer to do it for for real. So I said, yep, yeah, that that's fine. Give it a go. So we started bottling our beer, peers and friends were trying it and everybody really enjoyed it. And it just sort of went from there. And the name Neptune transpires from the previous business. So, which was, as I say, is an aquatic shop. So, you know, we sold water fish, well, obviously water fish, because fish live in bloody water, but aquatics fish <laughs> and pond fish and all those sorts of things. So. It was called Neptune Aquatics. And when we were trying to think of a name, we were coming up with all stupid names. And in the end, Les just went and called it Neptune Brewery because that's the backstory. That was our business. So that's how Neptune Brewery was born and, and the name. And everything that we brew, more or less, has some sort of aquatic theme. It's, you know, whether it's by streams, rivers, seas, or it's mythological creatures or even fish names. So it's something to do with water in keeping with Neptune brand. I think it's, it's a great idea. It gives this sensation and feeling of freshness. And, and also sometimes, you know, uh, again, you just need to have a beautiful, you know, brand story and just story um, um, itself to... To you know, to go with your 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 your, your, your beers, your products. So I totally love the idea. I didn't know that, so I'm, I'm glad. And and mm. you know, again, I may find out, as I said to you, a couple of informations. And one was saying that you probably had some background as a home brewer, or or less had it um, um, in terms of home brewing. Like, if it's true, what is the actual shift that starts? To home from home brewing to slowly start to you know a commercial site and a commercial production because it feels like it's a short jump but it's really not no it was I say uh, you know both of us were avid drinkers anyway and les wanted to do something different so doing the the home brew and learning about different styles of beers and how to to brew different styles of beers you know, was was really important. And that's, you know, a, a, a small step going to a bigger step. But for, for us, that's what we wanted to do. That was important. But even going from a home brewer to a professional brewery and upscaling, you know, that it's, it's not as easy as it sounds. 
because obviously when you're home brewing you're doing it on a much smaller scale and then when you get a you know you get the kit and it's bigger it's different so yeah you know it was trial and error at first but then you get used to it and there's enough people in the industry that we were very lucky that supported us as we were doing that so yeah if that was a big plus that we had we were very lucky with that and and i there are you we have some friends in common in in london and and they told me that it was uh, uh, quite quite you know possible to sometimes find you down to festivals in london or in reading or in different parts of, of the of the country as well and and this is like this is in my opinion is is the real difference between you know a work and a passion yeah. because that's how i feel from you and that's what i also felt from other people you are committed to the craft beer community in the craft beer world and I would love to hear how would you describe it and what would you say about the community itself and these words for someone that maybe doesn't know it too much about it the the community that the people that we know are brilliant they're very supportive the you know they will engage with you um, there's enough people out there that we have met over the years who've become really really good friends um and they're there for when you need that little bit of ice or a little bit of a pick me up even if it's not necessarily to to do with with beer if you're feeling a bit down yourself because you you know in any job you can be like that but the craft beer community has just been fantastic i say you know whether it's talking about you know a particular style of beer you want to brew whether it's issues you've come come across in brewing you know, even discussing wanting to do collabs and events that we've found everyone that we've come across has been great. And that spares you want to know because there's a lot of people who are in the same predicament as, as you, certainly when you're starting out as a, as a smaller brewery and you want to have that bit of support as well. So we've been really grateful. And as I say, a lot of those people have become really good friends and we know that we can speak to them and get their support, you know, and information. And that's the thing. There's not many people who are very precious either that they are willing to, to help you. And that's what it's about. It's a community itself. And that, that's what we, we both love. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and is there a specific field of the brewery operations that you're looking specifically after? Or you feel like, uh, given your position of owner and 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 you know like your 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 sentimental and your your operational attachment to it, you're looking after a bit different roles. Tell me more about about that, please. Oh God. Well, my main role is I'm head of sales and events. So obviously, you know, getting people to buy our our delicious beer, um, arranging events when we can have them. But I also do a lot of other stuff in between as well from, you know, I lend a hand with packaging, I lend a hand, you know, I do admin as well, uh, social media. So, you know, many of the people who own breweries, especially the, the smaller breweries, are very hands-on as well. It's not, you know, you will find that many of them don't just have their one rule, like Les does the brewing but he doesn't just do the brewing, he does a lot of other stuff as well. Um, and then we have Gavin who uh, works for us, he's our brewery assistant and he does deliveries for us as well and he helps Les out. Um, then we have JP who does our designs and does the graphics and such things. So we all muck in as much as we can do. It's not always a case of this is, is your, your job. And that doesn't mean that, you know, Les and I will do everything. It's our business, of course yeah. we will. But we will never ask anybody to not do anything that we don't think that they would want to do, of course. And we're so lucky that the people we have working for us are very supportive as well. Absolutely. Again, it, we are very close-knit. We, we are very tight. Um, yeah, and, you know, soon we're going to be expanding for uh, more more people as we're getting busier now. We'll be looking for more people to, to come and work with us. Looking forward to see if there are positions available and all of that, because uh, I'm sure um, right now, especially, uh, there are lots of uh, professionals in different fields within the industry that are staying with the, uh, you know, uh, he is very, very, very open. And, and it's not just 
and if already a lot, but it's not just the brewery then at the moment you're looking after because, um, you know, um, as I said, you're one of the most active um, uh, craft beer, um, you know, uh, individuals out there. And, and, and uh, when, when I'm looking for your name, I also find a name about an inclusive open group of uh, uh, beer, um, um, especially women and uh, women in beer that appreciate to, to drink together and to learn about that. Can you tell us a bit more about Ladies That Beer, please, as well? Yeah, Ladies That Beer um, came about, again, it was 2015 when I started it. Um, and it was through my love of beer and passion for, for beer and going out and finding that a lot of women who were so that were at beer festivals or were in a pub, they weren't drinking beer, they were drinking other drinks. And I just wanted to know why, why is it that women thought that the, the you know, didn't want to drink beer? And it transpires that, you know, a lot think thought that they didn't like it, even though they'd not tried it. Um, or they tried one and thought, no, beer is not for me, or it's fattening. So there were so many things that women were saying. And some of it was that they weren't able to go to places with good beer that they enjoyed. Um, because the friends didn't drink beer, they wanted to go somewhere, have good wine or whatever. So um, I've got a group of friends who are very much into their beer as well. And I just said, you know, I'm thinking of starting this group up. Um, and get women involved to come out, but not only that, to introduce women to, to beer and why it's such a fantastic liquid, you know, it, and a, a liquid that can be enjoyed by everybody. It's a sexless liquid um, that, you know, let's start a social group out that can support the bars and the pubs as well. Because as we all know, Friday, Saturday, we all pile into to the bars and pubs wherever we live. Well, we did do before COVID. Um, and you know, come Monday to Thursday, they were much quieter. So we set about arranging every month to go out. And we got more and more women joining us, whether they were on their own or they come in couples or, or groups. And it was fantastic. And it was something that they really enjoyed. And then we started doing events as well. So we would do um, bottle pairing, sharing nights. Then we would do like cheese and beer pair and off tasting sessions and it sort of grew like that and the name ladies that beer was was a, a pun on ladies that lunch it was a bit of a tongue in cheek a bit of a joke well if there's ladies that lunch well we're ladies that beer yeah. Yeah. so and it just sort of went from there to be honest and it was fantastic to see the support that we got from not just people in the industry but people outside of the industry as well you know, so, and as I say, it's just grew and grew. And since then, there's more women's groups that have started up on the back of that, saying that, you know, ladies up here have, you know, sort of made them think, yeah, I can do that. We can have something like that in our hometown. And that is fantastic. You know, the more that I see this, the more proud that I am that other women think that they can do the same and support other women. So, yeah. Absolutely. And, and and within your group, did you have some beer or brewing or hospitality prodigies, which from the experience and the beautiful, you know, welcoming feelings that they had um, uh, from, from uh, Ladies That Beer, they may have started their own beer journey. Do you know any of them or do you remember yeah. any of them? Yeah, we've had women who um, have started, who joined us and have started the, their own groups. Um, that not within Liverpool, because obviously that's where we're based, who've, who've started it further out, um, who've come to join us, whether that's in Leeds or it's in Manchester. Um, and, you know, that that's great. And again, they're educating women and men. You, you know, when we do our, our events, sometimes it is just it is just localised for women, but other times it's for men as well. Like the cheese and beer pairing that we did event at Head of Steam, we welcomed men to that, the off tasting we did. And, you know, but it's it's one of those men have no problem going out and, and drinking on their own. Men drink beer. And there are women who drink beer. It's not like it's a new thing, but there's not as many. So it's trying to provide a safe environment for women to chat about beer, to not feel that they're going to be put down or made to look silly if they ask a question. So 
educating them in that way. But yeah, a lot of the, the women, as I say, have, have educated, then gone on to educate themselves about beer. Some just want to come and try different beers and just, you know, enjoy the company socialize with other women and that is fantastic and as i say you know we're an open all inclusive group and you know we always say even if you come on your, your own you know you will be leaving as a friend and i personally have made lots of, of great friends and i know the the rest of the group have so you know that's all about yeah it's just like having a great time and being together absolutely learning something and 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 see um and just 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 celebration and let me put it in yeah. this way when 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 i say to people that i live in london and i do speak about what happening here in such a way uh, especially from the rest of the uk people are, are look at me like it's not everywhere like london it's not the world is not like this place where you potentially can find all sorts of you know uh, human beings from uh, behind and in front of the bar normally most of the time acting kindly and nicely have no sort of judgment or prejudgments and literally not making any sort of you know uh just 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 you know kind of uh wrong thoughts about anything but sometimes it's good to remember that for for women it wasn't that common potentially before to go into pubs and feel as comfortable as probably they're doing now and maybe they're doing most in cool or heaps area in in in, in London, right? Mm. Because because more and more I talk with uh, different ladies within the industry, more I find out that sometimes they had some experiences in bars or maybe like just like an answer, like asking what the person drink to the husband or to the person which is a male next to them. Like, is this mm. still happen from time to time? And if yes, what are you doing, yeah. Julie, when that happened? I think, well, I think it, it happens everywhere from, you, you know, we still haven't eradicated that where women are less knowledgeable and you've got to speak to the man about the, the beer. I'm very lucky that in the time that I, you know, I've owned the brewery and started Ladies That Beer that I've not had many incidents myself. Um, there's only been a couple where... Um, I, Les and I have gone out and I've ordered the beer and he's ordered a nice glass of Rioja and it's actually the glass has been put down of wine in front of me and then he and he's gone no actually this you know that's not mine and they've gone oh, I'm very apologetic um, and the only other thing I've say I've been very lucky when I've been into a bar and I wanted to have an imperial stout that was 10% and I ordered a third that I was explained in much detail about the percent of this beer and how strong it is and this but the gentleman who was stood next to me who had ordered the same beer literally a minute before he was just given that beer and I pulled the, the bar person up and I said I appreciate you telling me the ABV but why did you not explain everything to the gentleman as you you did me so it's just things like that it, it's difficult it's that fine line where you're not if you're like mansplaining or you're not trying to belittle a person that you're trying to support them and educate them but it's also got to be fair equality and that's all that we ask for in in the industry is equality um you know parity across the the, the board and as i say it is happening it is getting so much better and i think part of that reason is that there's so many women now standing up for that and men you know it's not all down to women there's some men who are shouting about it as well that you know equality in the industry hospitality whether it's your work in a bar or pub whether you're in a brewery whether you're in packaging all sorts of you know roles within the industry that it is fair and it is open and now it's become the, the norm to say, no, that's not right. We're not happy with that. We won't stand up for, for that. Lovely. I'm so happy to hear that. And 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 again, uh, I've been watching some photos about um, a beautiful sp uh, place, which I'm going to ask you uh, shortly, which is your tap room. And in the tap room was, was, was a good team. And the team was almost like, you know, a good representation of men, a good representation of, of, of women in that picture. So I'm expecting 
not I'm expecting, I know I'm sure about, and if I'm coming to the tap room, um, Neptune tap room, I will have, you know, that kind of feeling like I feel good. I'm in the right place. I'm in a good spot, well managed with nice people. Is he, is he, is he how he is, right? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're very proud of, of the tap room. The tap room is connected directly to the, the brewery. Um, and we started the tap, well, in May, it's our second birthday, but unfortunately, 12 months of, of that, like everybody else's, it's been, you know, on lockdown. Um, but yeah, you know, we're very lucky where we're positioned that, you know, we've got a lot of lovely people that visit us because we've got a number of houses either side of the estate that we're on. So we have a lot of regulars that come in to visit us and the lovely, lovely people. Um, and we want to be welcoming, we, you know, to, for people to come and feel at ease, to sit down, whether they're on their own, whether it's a man or a woman, they will have a, you know, have a beer, they're reading the book, or, you know, if they've come with the, we do allow children in the, the tap room until five o'clock. So for us, it's welcoming, not just the adults. It's also if they do bring the family that, you know, they will obviously children make sure that they're behaving, but it's, it's that welcome and inclusive. We don't want to exclude anyone. Um, and yeah, you know, what we've built, we're really, really proud of. And a lot of people tell us how, how thrilled they have the tap room that, you know, good beer where we are, there's a number of pubs, but they don't do craft beer like we do. And the different styles of beers that you can get from, you know, saisons to wee heavies to IPAs, pails, that you can't get that within Magul. But people who come to us, obviously they can get those different beers. And we also have food vendors on a Saturday. So every week it will be a different food vendor every Saturday. So we're also supporting our independent food vendors and we're offering something different to the people in the tap room that they can't necessarily get. And it's obviously at a fraction of the price than maybe if you go to a Thai restaurant or a Mexican restaurant in town. And it just builds for a great atmosphere. Yeah, when I say, it, yeah, we're really, really proud of that. We just can't wait to, to get it open and start pouring beer into glasses. <laughs> You're not the only one, because if you watch the comments, there is a, a, an epiphany of people claiming, when we can come back, we want to come back. So uh, it, it's a fact, it's a great place. And, you know, uh, uh, um, Julie, for, for, for all the reasons that we said about your experience and, and, and you know, your insights within the industry itself, I just would love to know from you how you feel right now. Like, are we next to reopen? Do we have to be uh, positive? How is the general vibe, at least in your area and in your city? It's positive. It's, it's very positive. There's a lot of bars and restaurants and pubs here with, uh, looking ahead to, to open it up. The downside is that obviously there isn't that many who can open up in April with an outside area. We can't do that. We don't have a big outside area. Um, at the tap room so for May it will be our opening um, but yeah everybody is looking very positive they're making plans about outdoor seating and obviously the great British weather we never we, we know, know what's going to happen whether it's going to be pouring down or it's going to be bright and sunny if it was like last year it was amazing April and May were absolutely fantastic but you just don't know but yeah it is positive I think there's that little bit of sort of cautiousness because as you know johnson has said that until we know how it's going and we're looking at the r rate and the percentage of people who've been you know immunized that we don't know whether that date given will be the one that opens but i think you've got to be positive i think you've got to got to be cautious of course but you've got to be positive that there is light at the end of the tunnel and you know we've we've all come so far it's been so difficult for everybody in the industry and people in general to yeah. you know to have your life literally you know shut off from friends and family socializing and doing the things that we normally do that once obviously the city opens up then like across the uk i think you're going to find that there's floods of people flocking to to those bars and pubs and you know and that's what we're hoping for when we open in may 
there will be guidelines we already know that there will be guidelines when we open but you know that people will want to come and and drink with us which you know we, we just can't wait you know see different faces as much as i love les seeing him every day every minute i'm just sure he's i'm getting on his nerves as well <laughs> yeah trust me i understand what you're talking about yes <laughs> It, it's it's always a great it's always a great feeling you know to to be ready to be next to um, the reopening the reopening of our hearts the reopening of our you know existence and 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 you know in many people's opinion is going to be um, um, again uh, the the um, the right way to uh, you know keep the past behind us and really looking forward to to it but as a very interesting document that Pete Brown wrote in 2018. Many people think that given the declining number of pubs in, in the UK, but in the same time, the uh, you know increasing amount of, of, of tap rooms and because of the breweries, because of the craft breweries, there's going to be potentially an uh, extra level of crisis for the pub themselves. So I'm asking you as well, at least in the city of Liverpool, are there going to be less pubs than before all that happened? And and is there anything that can help them, protect them, to keep them alive? How do you feel about that? I, well, I can't speak for every pub, but I've not. I've only heard maybe of one or two within Merseyside area who are, are closed because financially they've not been able to manage, which is understandable. It's been very very hard, but. The majority are going to be opening up and they will be managing as well and i think what we can do as as drinkers is obviously support them go out and support them in a way that means you know spending an hour buying a couple of beers and you know but at the same time i understand that there's people who are going to be very cautious as well and covid is never going to go away they've already said that so I think from a business perspective, you've got to make sure that you've still got things in place as even as time goes on, make sure hygiene is, is kept. You know, you've got your hand gel still in hand, even if we're not all wearing masks still. And the public then, they've got to make sure obviously that they're washing their hands, they're using the, the hand gels as well. Um, and just to keep each other safe, you know, not go coughing and sneezing over people. So I don't think it's ever going to go away for, well, it certainly won't be for a couple of years. How it's going to be when we open up, you know, is anybody's guess. But I don't think there'll be many people. I think most people have had enough and they want to get out. They want to socialise. They want to see the friends and very much support the, the pubs that they've missed and, and the bars. So I certainly think that that would be, you know, an issue. It has to happen. And, and you know, I'm thinking about uh, many other, you know, uh, events that we were going to enjoy up and down the countries. Uh, and, and, you know, like I even, even uh, big, uh, you know, gatherings like the Great British Beer Festival rather, mm. than, rather than some other one like that, you know, we, we're seeing them moving and transferring all the format and they offer into the to their guests uh, into mostly um, um, on, you know online so a question that i'm doing uh, quite often right now um uh, is if if you think all of this even this where we are inside of right now all of these experiences digital and you know uh, um, in a way like that we never had before are still going to be a helpful tool even for the future um and, and after the you know um the lockdowns and all of that yeah. or do you see them going a bit out from the radar no i think that they're always that there's always going to be a place everybody's now used to talking online and and the amount of of events that we've had across the uk from breweries and bars and or you know and it's been fantastic you know we've been involved in a few we've joined a few as well as, as drinkers 
and it's great so i don't think it's going to vanish it will reduce because obviously a lot of people are going to be wanting to go out and enjoying the pint in the pub but there will still be those people who don't want to do that where their their lifestyle has now changed completely and i do know some people who have actually stopped drinking altogether and, and they've made a lifestyle choice which they never thought they would do so there will be those people but there's also that more personal with the events that we've done and we've been involved in where you get your beers online and you can chat face to face you can ask those questions to the people that own the breweries or the the people who you know run the bars and so on so i think that's also important and it makes it more personal i think in some respects and it allows people who are further away to get involved if you're doing an event people from portsmouth newcastle wherever can join into that event and they haven't got to leave the the house whether it's the you know making them feel much more safer because they haven't left the house or because they want to get involved in that so i don't see it going away i see it being reduced but not Mm -hmm. going away and i think that's a, a good thing as well you know and also being able to get beers out further to people who maybe haven't got bottle shops near them or, you know, the pubs don't sell that particular type of beer. So they'll still be able to buy online and join in with events that way. Yeah, I've seen incredible things, beer 52 rather than, you know, um, all the other all players, distributors and, and breweries themselves. I've seen something peculiar this today, which was a, um, collaboration brew between a Brussels uh, um, beer project and, and Northern Monk and they were saying and they have discussed and they brew the same beer but in their own breweries yeah. so it, it all of that it, it feel almost like then uh, it fast forwards in, in 10 years um, in, in just 12 months so that's very exciting and, and maybe it's going to bring um, you know uh, the drinkers of the future within our industry because uh, one of the last questions as well that I like to, you know, I always touch before 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 ending is, th- how do you see the future of, of the drink and hospitality industry, especially considering all of these new trends? We mentioned the taproom, but let's speak about the beer, alcohol-free, CBD-infused, fruits, sour. Are we ever going to have a bitter again or something? Well, you will do from us. Nice. <laughs> Absolutely. We've just brewed um, recently an ESB and it has gone down so well we're really really proud of that beer we're proud of all the beers that we brew and you know for us we'll always brew pales and bitters you know your IPAs but we'll also throw something different in there as well so I think some people's um, palates will have changed and they'll have want to be drinking now the beers that they can drink more of sessionable so I think we'll find that they'll be becoming more popular. I don't think they've ever gone away, as I say, but I think they'll become more popular and people will will gravitate maybe more to, to them. But I also think that, yeah, um, when you say about low and no, there's a lot of breweries now that are doing, are doing them. And I have to say that the ones that I've tasted – have been amazing i haven't tasted a lot because obviously i tend to drink alcohol but the ones i have tasted are, have been great so i think lager has become a, a big thing we brew a hells um and we've got something else that's due to come out soon as well um which is tasting fantastic and yeah i say lagers now different types of lagers whether it's hells or pills it's you know um, I think they've become very big and there's some brilliant breweries that are doing them. So I don't think it's going to stay away too far from the difference, but I think personally more people will want to be enjoying those good beers, especially when you go to the pub, a nice cask bitter or a nice mild or you know a nice pale, and then maybe end off the nice on you know a big 10% imperial stout or a barley wine or something. But there's a place for all, and that's the important thing. There's so many breweries brewing great beer, and they do different beer styles as well. So there's a place for, for everything. 
I, I'm so happy that I that I spoke with you at this stage of of you know um, um, the, the, the the our experience in 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 this world because if I was going to hear you know all of your beautiful words a couple of couple of months ago I I had to I had to call you again and listening them again but now I really need it to have some my like, hint of of, of of you know of, of passion and 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 again as I said of of belief that we are in a good place so uh, Julie. Uh, I, I, again, it has been fantastic to speak with you. I knew that this is a confirmation and I can't wait to visit uh, the city of Liverpool, Neptune, and got to meet you and all of your team. It'd be our pleasure. Oh, well, it'll be our pleasure. We'd love to have you down, Gabs. Absolutely. Lovely. Well, I also would love to say thank you to everyone. We have an epiphany of comments. Uh, you, you clearly want to go and visit Julie and Neptune very soon. Uh, and, and, and again, I wish everyone a beautiful rest of the evening. I'm sure Julie does do the same, uh, can do the same, and 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 just just stay tuned and and you know drink good beer, have good food, and tomorrow we're gonna meet um, another beautiful guest. So please stay in touch and stay tuned. Thank you, Julie. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. bye.